Hey everybody. I'm back for some more super collider stuff. Alright, I'm just gonna test some sound real quick. Hey to it my age. Welcome to the stream. Uh let me know how the levels are on uh the mic and the super collider stuff. Good, good, good. Let's say R six one eight. What's up? Welcome. Cool. I'm uh cool. Well let me know if um the uh you know the mic is too quiet compared to the uh super collider sounds or whatever. So let me know. So I um I've uh, been doing a bunch of stuff off stream this week. And uh hey Casey, what's up? Uh so I sort of jotted down some things I wanted to try to get done on stream. Uh mostly I have been building synth defs and I'm just I'm trying to keep it kind of simple on the philosophy that like simple is better. You know, and, and you can make interesting complexity from simple building blocks. And I'm just going to try to string those together and make some interesting patterns and rhythms and textures and stuff. We'll see how that goes. But, uh, okay, but there's other, a couple little things. There's one really quick thing I wanted to share, uh, which is has to do with envelopes. Make sure this is still working here. It looks like we have signal. Uh okay, so envelopes. I just I was reading the Super Collider um Nabble forum and I just it wasn't even the point of the post. But uh so okay, so in all my tutorials, when we make an envelope, we usually do mgen dot kr or sometimes AR and then the first argument there is an envelope. Right, we'll have this one go from 0 to 1 to 0 over 2 seconds for the attack, 2 seconds for the release and we'll just have this be we'll, we'll make it look like this uh, not ploy, plot so that's the shape here uh, which you cannot see, here it is we'll triangle sort of thing and so that's our first argument to mgen and then we have a gate which doesn't really matter for finite fixed duration envelopes uh, and then we you know comma done action two sig equals sig times env uh, let's get the meters up here put this right here and uh, what is it? Alt Command T makes this node tree window. Okay, so this is super basic stuff. And uh, I I just learned from reading the forum that there's an alternate syntax here. Um, for me, at least, these lines tend to be really long, and and I I don't particularly like having to type done action colon two. Done action is actually the last argument in the AR and KR method. So you put your envelope and then gate, level scale, level bias, time scale, and finally done action. And so, you know, you have to specify it explicitly to bypass all the intermediary arguments. Uh, okay, so here's what you can do as an alternative. And maybe I'm like the last person to realize this. Uh, but uh, first of all, you don't need if you're using env.new, you can just forget about it. And then you just put your um, envelope specs in here. And then after making your new env, you just type .kr. And this is like a convenience method, which is the same thing as actually putting env inside of an envgen. And uh, for env, 
done action is actually the first argument, so you just have to put two. I think in the help file for env, uh, yeah, they're like all the way down here. Yeah, instance methods, AR and KR. And instead of using envgen inside a ugen graph, this message does the same implicitly for convenience. Its uh, argument order corresponds to the most common arguments. And I, I kind of have to agree with that. I'm always specifying like done action two for amplitude envelopes. And, um, you know, then gate. So it's just really easy. So I've started converting some of my synth depths uh, so that the envelope uses this. It's just, it's shorter and it makes it look more like a unit generator because it's like, you know, pinknoise.ar, env.kr. So I kind of like that. So I was like, whoa, you know, that's, yeah. Oh man, the syntactic sugar. Yeah, it's, uh, I think there is a help file called, if you just, let's just look up syntax shortcuts. And this is in the, and it just says syntactic sugar. That's, that's the description of that. And yeah, this this is I've I've gone through here every now and then, and every now and then I'm like, oh, I forgot about that. It's so easy. <laughs> yeah, a lot of convenient stuff in there. Uh, okay, let's take a look at what I've been doing. So I think or, like last week I made, I forget if it was last week or two weeks ago. I made this loop buff synth def which uses a phaser uh, to read through uh, a buffer um, from some start to some endpoint, which we can specify through a frequency argument. But I made a bunch of other stuff, so I'm going to go through it. Uh, and I also started trying to organize the code in such a way where I can just evaluate everything like at the top, like boom, server boots, loads of synth devs, so I just remove all the uh, server boot tree and quit messages and just free all the buffers, because uh, why not? And then I start a dictionary of uh, new, uh, I just create an empty dictionary, which is going to hold uh, language side buses, uh, references to buses on the server. Uh, Bring up this server meter window again. And I have a stereo bus, which is stored at the key reverb, so uh, that gets used later. And then I load my sax samples into B and my glitch samples into G, and we'll play some of those. Uh, actually, I think I have them now, All right? So I've got my, B is my dictionary with these sounds so the at uh multiphonic dot choose dot play yeah gnarly yeah uh and so g these are uh, glitch sounds that I actually made in Audacity by uh, taking like full length compositions and, and, and just compressing them down to like a tenth of a second using change speed, change tempo, change pitch. It just really just annihilating them. Uh, so I think I have like 80 something of these, 82. So just some sound files to start working with, probably way more than enough. And then we have our synth def. So I got a reverb synth def, which I think has been featured in, thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, maybe I'll try to show that real quick, um, how I make those glitches. Uh, let's go to Audacity. I mean, it's it's like a, a total trial and error sort of thing. Uh, let's just get out of this. Uh -huh. And uh, 
grab one of my compositions. Uh, um, where is the actual? Put this into Audacity. I can't take credit for this technique. It's one of my one of my friends back at the University of Texas showed me. He was like doing stuff like this. So we have this giant. Uh, I don't think this is playing. Let's do. I think we need to do this. Yeah. So this is my piece for trombone and super collider. And we just go effect, like change tempo, and we'll change the length down to like 500, from, and repeat, repeat, repeat. You know, and then maybe a few more times. Maybe like change the speed so the pitch gets higher. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. So it's it's just I I when I do it, it's just some combination of these three techniques here: change pitch, change speed, change tempo, and then you just listen through it, and you're like. You know, oh, that beginning sounded kind of good, so. So I'll find something like this and just like export it and add it to my glitch folder. So where is that glitch folder? Uh, Yeah, so I just number the files and stuff like. These are pretty fun. Fun sounds. Okay, so anyway, we got reverb. And I made this uh, kick synth dev because there, there was a post on the SuperCloder forum recently about synthesizing kick drum uh, sounds, which is... I, I think it's really fun. I mean, I, I sometimes just sit down and try to do it. Now, this is really actually fairly simple as far as kicks go. Uh, I have an envelope, which I'm using to sweep through three frequencies, right? It's a, it's a, what it's got, uh, it's a three point envelope. So start, and it's got a point in the middle and a point at the end with uh, specifiable durations and curves. And then I have an amplitude envelope and then it's just a simple sine wave with the frequency controlled by freak sweep uh, with the initial phase so that the sine wave starts at its maximum uh, uh, part of its cycle, the highest part of its cycle. Apply the envelope and then pan it and send it out. And the default arguments sound, oh yeah, I started sort of just showcasing some of these, just sound like this. And I was like, it's that's not bad. It sounds like a good kick drum. I mean, I don't know what it sounds like on stream or anything, but on my headphones, it sounds pretty good. So, uh, yeah, for instance, we can send it to the reverb. And maybe we can change the mix. I think the reverb synth is called reverb. So we can set the mix to be the mix of the dry and wet reverb to be like. Oh, thanks, guys. Good to know. Um, so we can set that. Yeah. And then I have these, you know, these breakpoints on the frequency sweep envelope or like, uh, I don't know what it is by default, but. we can set the starting frequency to be sort of higher up. That's a little too much reverb.
Yeah, sorry if the mouse is covering the text because I, I just I click on something and then I start typing and then the mouse sort of obscures it. So sorry if that's annoying. And we can set the end frequency to be higher. Oh. <laughs> And maybe the frequency curve to be sharper. So there's really a lot of different flavors you can get just by changing the uh, frequency envelope and the, you know, maybe the amplitude envelope. So I just tried to tweak it so that even if you don't specify anything, it sounds okay. All right, then I made this ridiculously simple beep synth def. Uh, we got an envelope. We got a sine wave. We apply the envelope. It's a uh, attack, sustain, release, fixed duration envelope. And then we pan it, and then we send it out. It's, I mean, why not keep it simple? Like, beeps are great. I tell you, man, clicks and beeps. That's where it's at, just clicks and beeps. So it just sounds like this. It's great. What's not to like? It's a beep. Um, can do these lovely high-pitched ones. Maybe we'll turn the amplitude down a little bit. Um, uh, you know, some like lower stuff here. And you know we have we've got uh, attack, sustain zero, and release point two. It's, I mean, in a way, we can make it sound kind of similar to the kick drum. Just doesn't have the frequency envelope. Uh, yeah, that's that one. Then we got this play, which just plays a buffer. Uh, envelope play buff. Yeah, just I usually have one of these in all my pieces. Just something which will simply play a buffer. It's really nothing, nothing fancy about it. But I like to, you know, you can change the playback rate. Uh, you know, I think I just plays one of these. Maybe we can randomize the pan position. Do a quick routine. So, you know, glitch sounds, what's not to like. And here's the loop buff from earlier. From earlier, I mean, uh, like last week or something. Do you mean did I try Sonic Pi lately? Uh, I I have I did download it a while ago and I started reading the tutorial and messing around, but uh, then I got distracted uh, and I never never came back to it. I want to play around with it more. Cool, I appreciate the feedback. Thank you, Twit My H. Much appreciated. Uh, I'd like to get into Sonic Pi more. I'd like to like teach a class on it, frankly. That's like one of the best ways for me to learn something. Uh, yeah, so let's get rid of this again. Yeah. And then I sort of copied and repurposed these uh, sawtooth waves. Yeah, these, these I'm using a var saw as a basis uh, for the sound source. Again, we have an envelope. 
and the frequency is specified as an argument and then it's got a noise generator used to detune it with a random initial phase for the Varsaw oscillator. Hey, Space Time Decor. Hey, uh, you, that was, you shared the, your code on stream last week and I remember I sort of struggled with it, but then I think I figured something out and I tried to send you an email through the Super Collider Nabble forum interface. I don't know if it went through. I also sent you a Twitch message. But I think I noticed something in your code that might explain why it wasn't working. <laughs> so you got four, four sawtooth waves. I don't think I got your email back. Maybe it went to my junk folder. But, uh, yeah, what, uh, what did you say? Did I, was I way off or did I fix it or? So these, these two synth devs are almost the same. Varsa sus, Varsa perk. The difference is that Varsaw Sus is a sustaining envelope with a gate, so I can hold that open for as long as I want. And Varsaw Perk is not a sustaining envelope. It's just got a fixed duration, so sort of a little bit easier for patterns. And that one sounds like this by default. Yeah, and these have um uh what I'm saying they oh, they got this uh low pass filter uh envelope. Yeah, so we start at a frequency, we go down to a a cutoff frequency that is, go down to a cutoff frequency and stay there for some period of time, and then finally we uh, go down to one other frequency. And LPF attacks us release. So we could do something like LPF A 5000, LPF B 500, LPF C 300, uh, LPF attack 0.2, LPF uh release one if you have curve one minus two yes I mean fed uh it's minus one uh <laughs> Oh, I'm glad to hear you got it uh, working and that I maybe caught something that might have been helpful. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I know, I know, I sort of knew that Sonic Pi was uh, like an adaptation or modification of the Super Collider synthesis engine. Uh, the syntax is, I find it to be significantly different just, you know, from a perspective of all the punctuation and parentheses, colons and stuff. So I, I think I'd be sort of wading through the swamp for a while, just trying to get it to do stuff. But, um, I just need to spend time with it. I think I just need to mess around with it. 
but uh, I, I would like to. Um, but yeah, and then here's the, this one is not sustainable, Varsaw perk. And then I made this chord progression. I don't know, I just tried to make some interesting synth thefts so that I can string them together uh, with patterns in this like really sloppy directionless improv session that we're about to do. So well, let's make some space here. And maybe I'll try to start um, with like a bass texture of these glitch sounds. Um, should probably think about like a tempo, maybe. Mm. I recently changed the uh, the delay until key repeat to be as short as possible, so you'll probably see me doing stuff like that every now and then. Uh, oh yeah, Temple Clock. Yeah, there's a comment on uh, one of the uploads to YouTube, so we might as well do that. So did I use T for anything already? No. Yeah, so Temple Clock is one of the three clocks in Super Collider. I was messing around with this a little bit. Hopefully I know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's Temple Clock, System Clock, and App Clock. And Temple Clock is unique among the three in that it, it thinks in terms of beats and bars uh, instead of being stuck in the world of seconds like App Clock and System Clock are. At least I think that's the case. And the first argument to Temple Clock is tempo. And it's not in beats per minute. You know, so you can't just do like, oh, 128 beats per minute. It's um, seconds per beat. So if you put a value of one, that's one second per beat, which means the tempo is uh, uh, 60 beats per minute. So two would be 120 beats per minute. And if you want to specify a value in BPM, you just do 60 divided by, you know, whatever value you want in beats per minute. Because if you put 60 here, you know, then that's one, so that's 60 beats per minute. You put 120, is that right? 120 beats per minute. Yeah, seconds seconds per beat. So half of a second per beat. Uh, let's, let's just try this. So if we do, uh, well, I know this is 60 beats per minute. Yeah, seconds per beat. Right, duh, I got it backwards. Okay, so maybe it's, uh, yeah, let's stop that for a second. 120 over 60. All right, so then I think if we wanna like print a little, make a little routine that shows us the current beat, uh, sketch, uh, sketch abs. Yeah, t dot. No, this is, this is uh, t up beats is the number of beats that have currently elapsed since we started the clock. So if we do the ceiling, this is going to give us the next beat. So let's just try something really simple here. Let's say hello, and then return nil so that it doesn't get rescheduled. I mean, I think that worked. Yeah. So if we do, um, uh, 
dot beats mod four, right? Because or t dot beats per bar is four, right? T dot uh, man, I gotta look up the. I I I do not usually use tempo clock when I'm dealing with patterns. I just kind of. I mean, okay, because when you uh, quantize a pattern without initializing a tempo clock, it just uses uh, tempo clock dot, not tempo click, clock dot default, right? Because that's, that's a thing, apparently. Like when you start Super Collider, it, it makes a default tempo clock. And it's been running for a while. And I just, you know, sort of lock it to, you know, the next sort of downbeat or every fourth down beat or something. Yeah, uh, space time, th there's like a whole, I mean, you, pr you probably know this, but there's like a whole area of the MIDI protocol devoted to like clock and synchronization and all sorts of stuff like that. And uh, I mean, SuperCloud can receive all those things, but uh, I, I have not done anything with that. Um, this for bar, and then, where are we? Beat door. Yeah, right. So this is right. It, so I got it backwards initially. It's uh, the beats per minute you want divided by 60, I think. So if we do this, okay. So I didn't quite do that. I mean, it's 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 posting beats, so we can see you know the downbeat is every time we get a zero. Um, I guess we could multiply this by two. This doesn't seem right. I think I'm doing this wrong. No, that's not right. I think what I'm going to do is just start making patterns and just use the uh, default tempo clock. I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to um, prepare a little bit better for tempo clock. I think I had, did I have a file that I was working on? At least to sort of show some of this. Uh, mm. No, I guess not. All right, well, I just want to sort of get some patterns started. That's what I'm... <laughs> I will, I will do it. I will... I will learn a little bit more. I just I just feel so bad just goofing around not really knowing what I'm doing. I don't know, I'm just I'm still in like tutorial land where I have to prepare everything. Okay. Um let's just keep the duration constant here. And uh we'll do sixteenth notes.
Okay, so I should have saved that file I was working on earlier. So, okay, so if we just play this, just to see what it sounds like, start uh, like 500 samples in. Like this. Oh yeah, I think it's my stretch. I think I've done this. Stretch is a key that you can use. So um so if it's one, right, that doesn't change it. So let's see. Yeah, so it's like a time multiplier. So if we do Okay. Yeah, this is this is coming back to me now. This is how I've done tempo stuff in the past. You provide for the door key a raw metric value, so in this case 16th notes and and then if we're thinking in terms of like uh, four beats per bar, then we do 60 divided by 120 because this is a, a time value. Uh, so if, if we were to do 60 in the denominator, that's our, our tempo beats per minute. So this would be 16th notes at 60 beats per minute. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. All right, so now so you could do something like this. Oops, gotta actually evaluate it first. Um yeah, it, uh, there might be something like that, something uh, with swing. I mean, I, yeah, the way I'd probably do it is to sort of manually somehow build it in to the, uh, you know, like you, what you could do if you do like a times a PC here, and uh, I'm just I'm just winging it here. Uh, no, 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 that's not right. Uh, three over two, two over three. Um, inf, it's gonna work. Yeah. I mean, not that that's particularly developed in terms of swing functionality, but you can do weird stuff like, you know, change the swing this way. So now it's gonna be less swung. And if we did. Yeah, this. Yeah, this is actually kind of cool. It gives it sort of a weird, weird feel to it. But yeah, all it's doing is um, scaling the door value by some value, and then scaling the subsequent one by the inverse. So it just makes sure that every two beats we're we're back on the downbeat again. Okay, so, um, so let's do, uh, okay, let's usually end up, no, 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 slow down. All right, PW Rand. Uh, we have this one. Uh, let's make it eight and this one four. And so we're going to choose from a variety of rhythmic patterns. Uh, let's do a 24th note. 
right? So a uh, 30 second note, we all know what that is, but instead of so like a Yeah, so one sixteenth times two thirds. Oh man, I'm so bad at this. Is that right? Ding over. Yeah. Yeah, so this should be a sixteenth note triplet. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, I want to do these in sequence. So we'll do that. For, so three sixteen the triplets. Da -da 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 -da. And let's just stop there for a second and make these half and half. Okay, that, that's cool, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna sort of save that, but... Um, think about this. Uh, okay, so... Uh, no, we'll keep that. Mm. I'm sort of toying with the idea of, of locking amplitude and duration together. Uh, so, yeah, I am going to comment this out because I, I need to revisit this. I need to remember how to do this. So, because, you know, when I have these rhythmic patterns, I want to have an accent pattern on them. So I need to somehow have dur and amp be sort of, you know, together. <clears throat> so it's a good way to test this. Uh And then, you know, if I have amp up here, <clears throat> if I were to do something like, uh, you know, 0.7 once, followed by uh, PX brand just. 0.05 to 0.1, seven times. Let's do 15 times. So this is going to give us 16th notes. The first one's going to be loud, and then 15 quiet ones. Okay, let's make this uh, something we can actually tell what's going on here. What have I done? Uh, yeah. That is a sound, isn't it? Oh, something. What did I do? Uh, PX ray and Oh, okay. <laughs> it's just a single thing. So we'll do that.
Right, okay, so but then if we had something like p w rand um, 16 and 12 twelfths of a measure with a 50-50 probability then the amplitude pattern is going to go out of sync like this. All right. I mean, it's cool. It's kind of neat. Whatever. But that's not what I want. So I think the way we do this is... Door amp. I know I have this. I'm just going to check this syntax in my trombone piece because I know I figured it out and I used it there. And then because it was in the code, I promptly forgot about it because I knew I could look it up later. Uh, patterns. Yeah, there's. I'm gonna find a door. I locked a whole bunch of these together. And there's this weird syntax. I never figured out what this was. I just sort of saw it somewhere and um well, let me try it this way. Hey crazy, how's it going? Sorry I missed your high. I'm deep in focus land here. Okay, so we wanna use P tuple because we need to generate a, a tuplet of two things. And we want to generate the door pattern and the amplitude pattern, which is this one. Uh, not inf, one. One iteration of that pseq. And this has to be in an array because it's a list, I think. And we'll do that once because it's inside of an infinite p rand. And then the other one, I am 90% sure I'm going to get a syntax error here. Uh, the 12, 12 notes. And we just do 11 of those instead of 15. Do that once. And close out the pw rand that and then we don't need this amp pattern anymore I'm gonna save oh my god it worked hey Adam how's it going man I can't believe that worked I <laughs> I didn't think that was going to work. So there's a there's a, a lesson for you. We want Dewar and Amp to be locked together. Uh, and in this case, I'm just going to randomly choose from one of two patterns, right? And it generates this one. So it's going to be this, just the value 1 over 16, 16 times in a row for Dewar. And then it's going to be a sequence of 16 values with this 0.75 followed by 15 lower values for amp and there's a 50% probability it'll choose that and it'll do it once and then there's a 50% chance it'll choose this other one which just plays eighth note triplets instead of sixteenth notes yeah first try <laughs> first try yeah I got lucky I guess sometimes I don't screw stuff up okay 
So now what we're going to do is make some actually interesting rhythmic patterns. And for starters, we're going to make a pattern which just plays 16 quiet notes. Like that. Because that's a useful thing to have, I guess. I do that right. Maybe I'll make this even quieter, very textural. And okay, so we're going to do 16th note triplets, just three of them. Um, Let's see. Okay, let's make this one a little bit. Man, this is gonna start to look confusing. This is I just there's no way around just making this look crazy confusing. I don't know if I should use spaces or not. They take up space, but I think they make it more readable. Um how about dig it do something? Uh make some eighth notes. Seven, I think I'm trying to make a bunch of 16. I know this is pretty square. I mean, I will probably try to make this more experimental eventually. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Re explain line 193 to okay. Yeah, this stuff here. Um, so what I want to do is uh, I, I have a pattern that controls the delta time. Okay, yeah, the, so the problem with keeping them separated is that let's say I have, like I just did, a door pattern of 16 16th notes in a row. So ticka, 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 ticka. And then it might also randomly choose a measure of Eighth note triplets. Da, 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 And if I just want the downbeat to be accented every time, I can't have a separate amp pattern. Because if they're independent, uh it's 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 not it's non-trivial for amp to know which pattern Dur has chosen. And so AMP needs to know, do I accent the downbeat and then play 11 quiet notes, or do I accent the downbeat and play 15 quiet notes? It doesn't really know. But if you lock them together, you can use this p-tuple pattern to generate the door sequence and the AMP sequence together. So p-tuple is making 16th notes, and this pattern goes to AMP, and it just, well, you know, I, I changed it, but it was a loud one followed by 15 quiet ones. So it just means that you can use one one pattern, you know, one one sort of master pattern to control multiple parameters. Hmm. I think one uh To... Yeah, no problem. Hope I explained that clearly. Um, three for the triplet at the beginning, followed by a uh, quiet one, a loud one, and Uh, three, ten, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five of these. I need a bracket here. And at once. Let's try this. Nope. What 
did I do wrong? Uh, I'm expecting. Oh, that's <laughs> a comma. Okay. That'll do it. Two, three, four, five. I think I wanted this instead. Yeah, the more I get into the storm, I'm like, ooh, I should lock more patterns together, but it's, uh... Ugh, I don't have the energy to do that. Okay, so if we want to quantize this... Um... Uh, let's see. Let's just make a little routine here. Um, uh, no, let's see, temple clock, gauge, tabs, uh, no, 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 default, Is this going to work? Nope. Uh, do I need to do this? What is your problem? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm going to I just going to give my best shot here. I mean, it's I'm going to 
be lame and just stick with multiples of 60. Uh, just so I don't get too in over my head. Uh, yeah, so that's not how you spell sked abs. <laughs> yeah, so the default tempo clock is running at 60 beats per minute. And we schedule on the next beat this function, which returns a value 1. Where is it? T. Beat. Is that a thing? Beat door? Yeah. So, maybe just to be formal, we can press command period to stop, to clear the tempo clock scheduler. So, downbeat, second beat, third beat, fourth beat. So, quantization, okay, the way it works is uh, we've got this PDEF and we're going to play it and then we're going to specify a quant value which can be an array uh which help file did i read this in yeah so well so we're playing this pdf and we're also setting its quant Yeah, let's look at that. But it's it can be an array containing the quantization. You know, so, you know, if you want it on the next beat, you just put one. If you want it on the next uh, every fourth beat or whole note, if you're in 4-4, four, four, you put a four. Uh, and then phase, like a value of one is going to shift it one beat later, minus one, one beat earlier. Uh... Here it is. Yeah, there's a twit my edge was talking. So a clock. Yeah, and I think this is the default tempo clock, I'm pretty sure, if you don't specify a clock. And then quant. Can we get any more information on quant here? I I think I tried this early. Oops. Uh yeah, so quant phase, timing offset, and outset. And I don't think we're going to need to concern ourselves with anything other than quant and phase. So I'll make these a little bit louder, maybe, just so we can really hear those downbeats. You know what? For simplicity's sake, we're just going to make it always choose the first one because it's just going to be really easy to hear what's going on. Um, and then we're going to do 0.8 and then 15 of these once. So now we're accenting the downbeat or the, the beginning of the, the pattern. 15 quiet ones, a little bit louder. And let's just, again, play. if we just specify zero for quant, I think it just starts immediately. Yeah. So it's not quantizing, basically. All right, let's go back to picking a one boring sample and never changing it, because I really want to make sure I'm doing this right. At least the rate is changing. So that makes it slightly interesting. Okay, so let's make this play so we can see our beats. And then if we do quant, or it should start when this sequence wraps back around to zero. So let's try it. Yeah. So this is called glitch base dot stop. Right. So two, three, and zero. So if we specified four comma one, the array, 
I think it will start on the next second beat. So nothing. Yeah, so this the second value in the quant array is the offset. And it's the uh, number of beats away from what it would be if it's zero. So it starts a beat later. So I think minus one should start a beat earlier. So on a three in the post window. OK. That's good. So if I set this to a value of 1 instead of 4, it'll just start on the next beat, the next integer, basically. Um, yeah. OK. That makes sense to me. And then I, um, if we want to change it while it's playing, like do something like this. And what if I just, what if I do this? Let's try this first. So quant one. That worked, right? So if I do something like um, let's let's clear this. Yeah, okay. T dot clear just stop. I guess this is this is also being scheduled on on the temple clock, right? It's uh, can we do something like this? Can we see what clock it's on? Is this equal to tempo clock dot default? Yeah, so it is running on the default tempo clock. Um, so what if we do mod 16? And then we'll quantize this to 16. And then we play the waiting game. So this is quantized to every four measures. Come on. Hey. Good stuff. Oh, well, that's not what I expected. I thought it was going to wait until it wrapped back around to zero to do that. Uh, okay, but I think, I think in my patterns tutorial, I just switched to a slightly different syntax, which doesn't seem right. It seems like you should be able to, the whole point of PDEF is that it's like the super convenient thing that you can just evaluate and have it, you know, just, just overwrite itself and it quantizes. But okay, but let's, let's try this again. So we're going, here we go. And I think what I did was... It's already playing, so we don't need to say dot .play again. So I'm going to try this after it wraps back around. Okay, so evaluate. Right, still same rate. Has not changed to rate 5 yet. When we get back around to the next 16th beat. Yes! Okay, so that works. It's I don't like that you have to change the. It would be great if there must be some syntax involving play and quant that you can just run regardless of whether the PDF is already playing. Maybe not though. I don't know. Yes, that is how the modulo operator works. Yeah, crazy. It's um. I mean, I'm just taking. Let's stop this for a second. So T is the default tempo clock, and we can check the number of beats that have elapsed since. Super Collider was opened, I think. So it's like 4,000, whatever. And if we modulo this, if we take the, the next available beat, so we, we round up to the nearest integer, and then we modulo by four, it's just giving us, you know, the modulo is basically a wrapping thing, right? So one mod four is one, two 
on a factor of three. And as we get to four, we wrap back to zero. Five mod four gives us one. Six, seven, eight will also wrap back to zero. But you know, if you if you don't like displaying them as zero through three, you can just do this. Uh, well, oh, yeah, ah, oh, yeah. This is a this is an order of operations thing. If you want to say like, uh, um, uh, this array one comma two comma three dot post ln, no problem. If you want to add one to this array and post ln. It uh, it posts one, but then returns the modified array. So you have to put all that in parentheses, and then that works. So we need to do plus one, but then put all this in parentheses. Oh, okay, and it's still modulo 16. Let's go back to four. So that's, you know, a more human readable thing, especially if you're used to like DAWs and, and stuff like that. But it still behaves the same. So if we do dot play quant or it will start playing next time we see one in the post window. Okay, I think I've got this figured out. So what I want to do now, I think my plan was to make interesting sounds and we're just like stuck on this one pen <laughs> figuring out stupid tempo stuff. Uh, okay, so what if we do BPM 140, T equals tempo clock dot new, BPM over 60, bang. So now move this stuff here. Uh, we don't need that. We don't need that. I guess we don't need that. Move this stuff. Hold on, let me take a look at your question before I keep going. Uh, here you go, do the same thing. Make a sequencer with T def, like PD style. Right. I can't. I can't tell if you're asking something specific, but I don't know if I answered your previous question. Uh, you know, it's like to say that zero is the downbeat and three is the fourth quarter note. I mean, you can. They're just numbers, and uh, you can do whatever you want to those numbers. I mean, you can. So you can add one to them if you want. You don't have to, um, as long as you're consistent with everything that you're doing. Um, so, okay. So we have BPI 140, tempo clock. And now let's, is this gonna work? No, 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 that's not right. Um, If we do, I gotta figure this out. So, t dot beat duration point five. Uh, so that's that makes sense. So we do want to wait that long, but uh, t dot. Oops! 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 Let's just post the beat. Number of beats that have elapsed and then reschedule every half second. Uh, right. And then, I mean, so the question is, do we do we want to do the math here? 
you know, instead of just posting the raw B value to make it look like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I think what we would do is let's just, let's do, t I'm just gonna go on sheer instinct here. And then if we, now if we mod four, I mean, if we mod four, it'll look right. Just don't know if it'll, if zero is the true, might as well add one, why not? So those are beats at 120 beats per minute. So now, I'm going to comment out this stretch pattern because I have a vague recollection that the door value is going to be treated as beats instead of, oh, I have no idea if this is going to work. Okay, so just try it. We'll play and quantize to the nearest downbeat. One, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, I think I see what's going on here. Uh, the the beat value, like so, is is a uh, one twenty, right? So every every so a value of one here. This would because this is running. Oh wait a minute. We need to play this on the correct clock. Okay, let's just try this again, as is. Just see what's going on here. Okay, so. I also wanna add that I'm sure there are methods somewhere, because there's so many methods for a tempo clock and I'm sure there's a way easier way to just display beats. So I will look into that. Um, so then, as is, it seems like it's waiting for the fourth measure and playing like 64th notes or something. No, dot, stop. So if I change this to one, it's hard to tell if that's doing it correctly. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I mean, I think that's working. I'm gonna say that's working. But uh, if we just change this to a quarter of a beat, that's what I think that means. I know we're not playing it on the right clock yet. Okay, so let's change this so that it's playing on our tempo clock. Oh, and then I pressed command period, so we gotta do this again. Hello. And now it's not playing at all. What is happening? Hold on. This was working a second ago, wasn't it? So we're just gonna do it this way. Uh, excuse me. What has happened? No synths, no signal. Did I? I don't understand. Okay. Whatever. OK, 
Okay, it's working now. Okay, so we got our 120 beats per minute tempo clock. And T comma quant one, right? This is our tempo clock uh, beats. Uh, tempo, is that a thing? Yeah, okay, so that's that's right. It's It's got a tempo of two or 120 beats per minute. And let's play it. Okay, so those sound like 16th notes to me. So here's what we're going to do. Stop that. Uh, stop that clock. Let's change this to 140 beats per minute. Boom. Boom. Ugh, okay, so I got to... Let me just fix this real quick. Uh, so instead of times 2, I want to multiply it by... BPM over 60? No. Uh, Okay, let's forget about that for a second. Wait, it's working now? I didn't change anything. Okay, hang on. Let's try 60. This should be, yeah, seconds. Boom, boom, cool. Let's double it. That is working. And let's try like 108. It's the right tempo, and we're seeing one through four. Oh, oh, okay, okay, I know what's going on here. Uh, we're rounding up to, okay, so Sketch Abs takes an absolute time in seconds, right? Yeah, it's, and, and it's just, it's just deciding to do this on the next integer instead of the next beat. So, uh, okay, there's something called beats to, seconds we got beats dot beats to seconds no we just it's sometimes that you know the integer i totally understand what's going on here i i just not immediately sure how to fix it uh you know for if, if we're at 120 beats per minute or any multiple of 60 t dot beats dot ceiling will always round up to something which is also a, a beat on the tempo clock so we're always going to see integers here. So if we made this 180, uh, all right, maybe not. Uh, oh, now there's just some rounding errors and stuff. Man, okay, I don't know. Forget about that. Let's 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 not even worry about the numbers. And so here we now have Yeah, okay. So this is um you no know, quantization value in bars, I guess. So if we Two and 
Yeah. And so let's now just clear that. Let's go up to 140 and we'll print these. So it's now faster. And I just want to hear, is this faster? Oh yeah. <clears throat> so that is interesting. Something I, I, I guess I never really knew for sure, but when you are playing a pattern, I think I'm correct that the door value is not a value in seconds, it's a value in beats, but they're usually interchangeable if you don't play them on a tempo clock of your own because they play on the default tempo clock, which is running at 60 beats per minute. And so seconds equal beats. One beat is one second. But if you play it on a clock that's running faster or slower than that, then a value of one for a door pattern no longer means one second, it means one beat. Uh, so a quarter of a beat is a sixteenth note, if, if one beat is a quarter note. And then this quant value here, it's quantizing to, this is a value in bars, I guess. I think so. Anyway. Right, now doesn't know what T is anymore. Right. And now it's not working. Let's go back to the default tempo clock. To stop this first. Oh, hold on. And this is still 140, right? Let's do, oops, I don't want to change that one. Try to find a nice tempo that we can work with here. I wanted to choose this one fairly often. Okay, so here's something else I want to do. Let's do another P tuple. And what I want to do for this one is have it just play, you know, 16 note events whose individual durations are random, but when added up together, when you add these durations together, they equal one measure, right? So, you know, here's an example of 16 values, which when added together make one. So let's see if we can make this array. Array.fill. No, we can just do it with a syntax shortcut. Um, we'll have them be as short as 0.01 and go up to 0 0.5, 0 0.3. And da, 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 da. Uh, X brand, maybe? X clam 16. Yeah, so there's a bunch of random values. And then we're going to normalize sum so that they always sum to 1. And if we don't normalize sum, 
and it's just going to be some random sum, right? Just nonsense numbers. Okay, so those all add up to one. So then we just pseek through them. Like that, once. And... I don't really care what the amplitudes are. I mean, maybe we'll accent the first one. Yeah, sure, we'll accent the first one. Because, for now, we want to hear that downbeat. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um... 15 of those. Uh, oh, here's what I want to do. Um, we'll do a P shuff. Just going to pick a random order. We'll have one accent denote somewhere in there, but the rest of them will be uh, random values between. Let's make this one louder. Make this one a little quieter. And between 0.02 and 0.08. Exclaim 14. Uh, so this is going to give us an array of 15 values. And the first one is 0.7. The rest of them are below 0.08. And P shuff is going to pick a random order of those. So we're going to P seek through this. We're going to get a 0.9. Then we're going to get a random order of these 15 values, one of which is 0.7. So we're going to get a downbeat accent, a bunch of random notes with one loud one. <laughs> and I have no idea if that's going to sound good, but we're going to try it. Um. Got to close out this PC. One. Uh, one of those. And now we need to make that happen some of the time. Let's, let's start by doing 0.5, 0, 0.5. So cut out the middle pattern. This one here we're not going to hear at all. I can hear it, yeah. Downbeat. Do it uh, three out of four times. We're going to hear the normal one. Make some of these be dry, and some of these go to the reverb.
Wow, I can't spell. Instrument. Oh, for God's sake, instrument. Peep. Uh, let's see, we got, um... Let's do... Um... 1 16th. Forever. And frequency. Let me stop this for a second. We, I don't. I don't know. Coil. I don't know coil. I don't know what that is. Um, if you guys want me to keep that running, I'd be happy to do it. I just. I don't know if it's annoying to just have that in the background while I. While I work. Um, uh, okay. So here's a cool trick. Let me just make some eighth notes quick right here. Uh, da, 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 dot play quant one. Oh god, that's annoying. Why? Why? Why did I do that? Let's do this maybe. Oh, we need a stretch, don't we? Still at 110 beats per minute. Yeah. Yeah, that's quarter notes at uh, 110 is still working. Uh, P, C, let's just do uh, array dot rand, no, 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 dot fill, nope, uh, rand, uh, minus seven to positive seven, exclaim eight, and then we will sort this. Uh, just want to make this sound okay. That sounds awful. So a neat trick you can do when you're making patterns. Uh, hey, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Take care, man. Uh, yeah, cool trick you can do with patterns is um, for any of the frequency patterns, so freak, midi note, degree, note. I think if you just specify any symbol, it becomes a rest. which I find is really handy because it allows you to just specify a constant door value, just like whatever, you know, however you want to subdivide your measures and stuff like that. So you can just do 16th notes and then you just provide the notes you want and wherever you, uh, you know, wherever you want rest, you just put a rest. And the, the shortest symbol you can do is the, like the null symbol, which is a symbol that has zero characters in it. And this is easier because if you don't do any rests, yeah, I know it's pretty handy. I wish I'd known that months ago. I I forget when I learned that, but uh, yeah, because if you don't put rests in here, then you need to you know do this complicated sequence of durations to compensate for you know like if you want like da 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 you know it's I mean if those are all different pitches. Like da 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 it's that becomes really complicated. So just just do like ticka 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 for your duration and then just put rests in the frequency pattern wherever you want them. So um what tempo is this again? Okay, so 
Let's do the brand the seek to um and then fourteen rests. Right. Let's do a so that's going to be dit dit. And this one's going to be dit dit. Uh, I just want some like glitchy pure beeps or something. Uh, eh. uh, if we ran, let's, we're going to do that forever, randomly choosing. And maybe sometimes it will do nothing. Okay, so let's add them together. Oh no, we're going to go back and make sure these are really synchronized because it doesn't sound like it. All right, and let's also do this. Okay, I will turn it down. Sorry about that. I know it is it is not a nice frequency. I was just I was just in the mood. That is not synchronized. Maybe stretch is throwing it. No. Uh, okay, this doesn't make a lot of sense right now. Uh, Let's do we take away mm. okay, let's take away this stretch. Let me just let's stop all this. Uh just just to be sure. B def dot all stop any ghost pdefs. I don't know why I'm doing this. Okay, so let's quantize this to four.
Uh, detune is a default key in in P binds. Uh, if you yeah, so I think it will work even if you don't include it in your synth def. Um, yeah. Let's let's just confirm that real quick. That's a good question. Uh, yeah, detune I believe is the default key. Um, I forget if it's like a ratio or semitones or I think it's a value in hertz actually. Uh, out zero sig exclusion. Did I do that correctly? I think so. Okay. What am I doing? Oh my God. Okay. Uh, freak just to uh, 500 and amp. I didn't, there's no amp there. What am I doing? There's no out. Just detune. Tune, uh, P, seek, uh, zero. 10 dot dot 200. Let's see what this does. Yeah, because in, in the in the help file, it says uh, it, it gets added to freak. Freak plus detune. So yeah. So I could also make an argument, detune equals uh, zero, freak. Yeah, no problem. I, I wasn't totally sure about that, and I was interested in that as well. So I could do something like this, and I, it should still work. Like I'm overwriting the default. Was that the same as it was before? I think it's being added twice now. That is interesting. But if I were to do, yeah, I, the only explanation I can think of is that when I add it here, it's being plugged into the synth def and generating the synth, but it's also being added to freak because that's the default behavior. Uh, but you know, I can, I mean, what I usually do is like, I think of detune as a ratio, something like this. So frequency times one by default. Yeah. It's called, yeah. Detuned freak. Yeah. Detuned freak is what actually, I guess, eventually gets passed to the synth. I don't know. This stuff is always eluded me just like a little bit um I, I understand enough i think to sort of hack my way through it when i don't quite know what i'm doing but if i did something like this then i would just take like uh these you know we can do zero dot dot eight and but i don't want to multiply i mean these would be like 
harmonics, I guess. If I do it now, right? Did I not run this? Yeah. So I guess by doing, I mean, it might still be adding a value of one hertz to this and multiplying by that value. That's a good question. But anyway, it, it is, a, it is a, a valid key that actually does modify the freak key. <laughs> Super Collider, you wild. That's right. There's no taming Super Collider. Got a mind of its own. Come on, now. there you go. Oh, I quantized it to four. Yeah. Let's go back to, um, what if we do PX Rand and then we do, I want to choose four or eight from the at glitch. Uh, what if I do dot scramble at And we'll scramble this and then take zero through seven. Does that work? Uh, oh, I think it's got to be this. That size. Is that eight things? Yes. Okay. Uh, inf. Maybe we'll just do th three buffers to start with. So now it should just play three different sound files. Yeah. And here's something. Here, I think this is going to work. So this synthdef. Uh, play has no frequency argument. Um, right? Yeah, no frequency. But we can still use a frequency or MIDI note or degree pattern to add rests into the event stream. So, uh, so da, 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 where where should I put this? Put it here. I can just say freak, and this isn't going to have any effect on the sound, but it's like if I do P rand, uh, you know, one or a symbol, then it should put a bunch of rests in there. Yeah. Uh, what is your problem? Yeah. So if I comment this out, then we just get 16th notes. There, yeah, MIDI note is different. Uh, so, I mean, uh, if you're using the MIDI note key and you want to detune them, then you would use uh, C transpose. Uh, let's go back to this example, which thankfully I, I kept. Um, so if we have this, um, so let's just make sure this is still working. Yeah, so instead of freak detune, we'll do MIDI note. We seek uh, 60. We'll just keep it at 60, just do middle C. And then we can do C transpose. And this is a value in uh, I think it's half steps. 
Um, first of all, let's just set that to zero. And then if we do something like this, if we cut that in half, we have quarter tones. And if we divide by 100, then we're talking about cents. Yeah, I just can't even hear it. But like something like 10. Yeah, so this is, I mean, they, they sort of work in, in like a hierarchy of, um, of stuff here. So, you know, you have your detuned freak, which is the actual pinch, and you can specify freak and add a detuned value. Or if you don't want to work on this level, you can work on the level of MIDI notes and C transpose, and you can also use the harmonic key, which I guess is going to give you the harmonic series. If you do like harmonic two, it's an octave up. I'm just guessing. Uh, and then the level below that is working on note, where I think zero is middle C. And then there's G transpose. I, I yeah, it's like, I, I don't know too much about this level. And then some people I, I know work with degree and M transpose. And like I'm usually here or here, but there's this interesting hierarchy of determining the pitch of a synth diff when you're using patterns. Yeah, what was I doing? I think what I'm gonna end up doing eventually is just picking like eight that I like, or maybe even making a very specific pattern that repeats. I don't know. I have to just play around with this. Here's another trick. S dot make GUI with capital G. And if you ever if you're ever doing something random and it sounds amazing, and if you stop it, you'll never hear it again. Just bring up this uh, little GUI window and just hit record. And then you stop whenever you're done. And then if I go into music, uh, super collider recordings, uh, this, yeah, today at 7.01 p.m. So I sometimes find myself doing that if I'm messing around with randomness and suddenly something like amazing happens. I'm just like, okay, I'm going to record that real quick. And that way you have it forever and you could then put it back into your buffer library and uh, yeah, do more stuff with it, load it back in, process it further, get rid of that, get rid of that, no. Where are my beeps? Oh, it's because I'm not playing it. That is why. Nope, nope, nope. Colon. Yeah, so if I were to keep messing around with this, maybe I'd do like octave up or something. Uh, times Rand two and two. No. What? Hang on. So my eventual goal is to just have a bunch of complex and interesting patterns which, if left alone for long periods of time, don't really get too stale. 
you know, and like, you know, maybe enough of them playing and a lot of them have good amounts of silence built into them. And then maybe I can sort of sculpt them and shape them and massage them with some live, you know, PDEF calls to change buffers or change this or that. And, uh, you know, eventually it'll, eventually it'll get sort of interesting. Uh, I don't know. I uh, just got to keep working on it, I guess. Uh, P rand. We will do zero, negative one, one, or some totally random value. Maybe not that much. And we'll put it in the center some of the time. Sorry, I was I was in the zone for a second. Hold on, I see some some new new chat new stuff in the chat. Yeah, um, one reaction I have uh, to whip my itch is um 
kind of depends on your philosophy of live coding, I guess, but to have stuff prepared in advance. Uh, so, uh, you know, like you have a bunch of patterns you play and then you have a bunch of like changes that you know you're going to do at some point in the piece. And, you know, they're already sort of coded up and you could put like comments, you know, section two, whatever. So you can just do a fine for section two and you're like, okay, cool, there it is. And then you're already there. Um, cause I mean like having to like prepare live code and you have like 32 bars to do it. I mean, that's, that's pretty crazy. I mean, you, you gotta be like a virtuoso to do that and do it really well. Uh, yeah. And, and if you do quant zero, then you're not quantizing. So. I, I assume maybe you meant like quant one or quant some number. Don't really know. Anyway, so okay, I, I we're, we made some progress today. That's oh, that's that is just lovely. The thing is to prepare this live, also. I mean, like. It's pretty ambitious, if I'm understanding you correctly, to like start with nothing. I mean, you're not talking like, okay, ready? Let's do a live coding session. Here we go, ah! and then just try to try to figure it out as you go. I mean, I, I'm of the mindset that you want to have all your sort of dominoes mostly set up before you start the show. Uh. And maybe while the dominoes are falling over, you can like set some up over here and then knock those over. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's live coding starting from scratch is like everyone watches you set up the dominoes. And uh, I don't know, that's one way to do it. I, I don't, I try not to judge. I mean, there's, I, I'm sure there are people who are just absolutely incredible live coders out there. Um. But anyway, I, I think I'm kind of done with this for now. I think this is a good place to stop. Yeah, no problem. I But I just want to throw out there, if, if anyone is here because they've got code they want me to look at, I just want to, I'm going to try to make that an option at the end of streams if, if anyone is interested. Thanks. Um, thanks, guys. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, what am I going to try to do? I'm going to try to really, yeah, no problem. Thank you. I, I'm going to try to read up on tempo clock and probably also work on some of these patterns off stream. Uh, I guess I can. You mean like, um, well, I, I upload this to YouTube, which means you can, you can go back and, and pause the video and copy it, but I guess that is kind of annoying to have to copy code from a video. Uh, you, I mean, I, I guess I can, maybe I'll try to like make a GitHub repo of stuff. Okay, I'll make, I'll put a star by the tempo clock stuff. I mean, specifically what, uh, I mean, it'd be good to have a sense of what would be really helpful in terms of tempo clock. I mean, just, you, I, I assume you have some tempo in mind for some performance or some piece and you want to make a tempo clock and then play different patterns and rhythms that are strongly synchronized to that tempo clock. I mean, I guess that's kind of general stuff. Can try to do that. And something else I wanted to share today, but I guess maybe I'll have to wait, is wave shaping. But you know what, I'll give a tiny preview of that because that was really cool stuff just to end on a high note here. So I... Okay, yeah, I uh, I will save all this. I'll, the the sketches stuff, I mean, I'll, I'll find a place to put this and I'll, you know, I'll tweet it or something or I'll, I'll make sure everybody's watching sort of knows about it. So wave shaping... It's where you, uh, you've you got a, a what's called a transfer function. 
and you use one signal to index into that transfer function and you play the output. Um, so, so what I do here is we allocate a buffer, which is going to eventually be a wavetable, which is a special supercolor format, and then we allocate a buffer, which is going to be a signal. And then so I make a signal, and it's empty, and then we use the wave fill method to just map the index onto the range minus 1 to 1. And then we load those into these two buffers. This one as a wavetable and this one as a straight up signal. And then I'm going to plot them. So this is our signal transfer function, which is the identity transfer function. So anything going in, like if a value of 0 comes in, the value of 0 comes out. The value of 1 comes in, the value of 1 comes out. And uh, get some of these out of the way. And this is a wavetable, which looks kind of different. Uh, yeah, it's got the values themselves and also the the values of the differences between consecutive samples. And it's just like a constant small value. It's It's got these interleaved values because it's more efficient. And then we got this uh, sawtooth wave, which is indexing into that wavetable. Turn that down just a tiny bit. And because this is the, hang on a second, let's bring this up here. Because this is the identity transfer function, the result is exactly what comes into it. In this case, a sawtooth wave. Is that too loud? Anyway, but then we can like do weird stuff. So I have this funky, uh, this weird uh, trigonometric thing. So instead of that, we're going to use this. And so this gives us a much stranger transfer function. And here's our wavetable. And so then if we go over here and index into it using Shaper, then let's start this real quiet just in case. Yeah. Where's my scope? Then we can like detune one channel slightly to make it sound extra interesting. Yeah, so I was messing around with that, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, I was getting into wave shaping because. There was a recent post on the Super Collider forum, I, I already said this, about making kick drums, uh, you know, synthesized kick samples. And, uh, yeah, one suggestion was to do, like, wave shaping and filtering in parallel and series in different combinations. So maybe eventually I'll copy this kick drum uh, synth that make, make another one, include some wave shaping and filtering and just make it sound kind of gnarly and distorted. Yeah, wave shaping is fun. Uh, that's what I, I sort of tweeted that yesterday. Okay. So now for real, I think I'm going to call it. And um, it's been fun. I'm glad I sort of got some things right today. Always sort of an experiment. But yeah, I hope that I have more 
cool stuff to show next time. I'll try to get into Tempo Clock and figure out something substantive and helpful. So yeah, thank you again, everybody, for watching. Uh, I'm I'm definitely gonna stream again next week. I'm next week gonna be done with the summer teaching gig that I'm doing, and uh, so I might stream a little bit earlier in the afternoon, like around two or three, instead of five. Uh, I don't know. I just might have a little more energy around then. Anyway, so thanks again, and thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all next time. I'm going to try to do it every Wednesday. Yeah. I'm going to try. If I can't make it, I'll tweet something. All right. Later.